Hi there and welcome to this video in which I'm going to talk to you about how to create a really inspiring and useful reference library that you can use going forward with your drawing practice and maybe even other graphic arts like painting or digital art. But the first thing I want to do is address some of the concerns that can come up when using reference material as an artist. So some of the concerns that can come up are, well, it's just copying. Perhaps when you were at school, you were told only to work from life or that working from life is the best practice as an artist. Or maybe you were told like I was not to work from photographs as if working from photographs somehow creates bad art. So all of these things I think are myths. So when I started looking at art history, I was really surprised to see there were lots of artists that use uh, photography and reference material in creating some really famous iconic paintings. Um, in particular, Francis Bacon, who whose work certainly couldn't be described as photorealistic. Um, he used a whole catalog of photo reference including um, dental slides and pictures of autopsies and all sorts of things. All this visual material went into the creation of his work. Also an artist I really like, Walter Sickert. Um, later on, he started to use photography in a lot of his portraits. And he would actually leave some of the, um, the after image of the grids where he'd gridded up his paintings from photography. So in my previous talk, I mentioned the book Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon. And I think in that he makes some really useful points about using reference material. So one thing he says, which I really like, is to think more in terms of practice rather than plagiarism. We're not trying to copy someone's work exactly and pass it off as our own. We're actually looking at other artists' work, trying to draw inspiration and trying to understand how they think. And if we do that with enough artists, then we can be sure that what will emerge won't be a, a carbon copy of anyone that's gone before, not that you could do that anyway, but something will emerge. Um, in the process of looking at artists that inspire you, you're probably going to be able to tap more deeply into some of the things that excite you as an artist. And as I said, the more excited you are about creating art, probably the more you're going to do. Um, these are the things we have to encourage uh, in our practice as artists. So in terms of the argument about you should always work from life, I am actually a strong believer that you should work from life as often as possible. But you don't have to be black and white about it. It's not a case of either or. Um, I find working in the studio from reference photographs to be really useful and then that can inform your practice when you go out and paint on location. In the same way, if you spend time painting outdoors or drawing directly from nature, that's going to feed into your work with reference material and probably feed into it in a way that makes it look more spontaneous than a sort of slavish copying. So what we're gonna focus on today is um, helping you to start your own reference library. Now, you may have one already, um, but my suggestion is, is that you never want to be short of ideas and things you can draw on so that when you do find yourself with a few moments of spare time to do some drawing practice, you've got something that you can easily dip into to get some ideas going. So how I like to split my library up is into two main categories. Firstly, there's photography, photo reference, both my own photographs and also photographs um, that I might pick from films or magazines, maybe even postcards, that sort of thing. And then also a reference library of other artists, um, all sorts of different artists, anything that I find inspirational. I tried to find a way to record that and keep some sort of live of those artists. So as I say, there are lots of different sources for reference material. I quite like to look through artist magazines. I subscribe to a few artist magazines, including artists and illustrators. I also love to collect books on art. Um, mainly, I like to go to secondhand shops, go through their uh, their little bit at the back where they have often um, how to paint books. Occasionally you'll find something and you look through it and you really like the art in there. I've come across loads of really interesting artists that way. So I've got a whole stack of those books um, sort of piled up at my studio now. Um, and also, as I say, postcards, magazines, all sorts of places where you might get reference material. The point is, is to start collecting it and try to get it in one place if possible. So what I want to talk to you today about is using the screen grab tool. 
Uh, now this will vary depending on what platform you're using. I'm using Windows. So for me, I use the, uh, the Windows key and the print screen button. You press those together at the same time and you will um, grab whatever is on your screen or monitor at that time. Um, I know on iPads, those sorts of things, it's usually the main button at the bottom combined with the on off switch. If you press those together, um, you will get a screen grab, but you might have to look depending on what you're using. I don't know whether you can do them on mobile phones, um, but you should be able to find some way of capturing whatever is on your screen. And that opens up a whole world of reference material that you're really gonna find useful. So I like to look at places like iPlayer, um, YouTube, uh, Netflix, all the places where you can watch films. Um, you can pause those films and find really good um, sort of images, all sorts of things that you can then put into your library. As well as the screen grab, I also like to create, um, I use Pinterest quite a lot and uh, Pinterest is great for recommendations. So once you find a few artists or art styles that you like, um, it offers you loads and loads of suggestions based on those. And I find it's a great place to discover new artists and uh, new styles of art that you might not have found otherwise. So what I do on there is create boards for drawing and painting and that sort of thing. And I collect images that way. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Okay, so I've come over to YouTube now and I'm just gonna show you the sorts of things I might do if I'm trying to get some reference material on a particular subject. Uh, so I put in Suffolk Landscape here and it's given me a series of options. Um, and I'm looking to collect some sort of uh, reference that I might be able to use for uh, drawings or paintings in the weeks ahead. So um, I quite like the look of this one, uh, Pin Mill, Suffolk. Now this is an actual photographer, Darren Knight. So I was thinking if you're going to use someone's um, photography in a sort of fairly literal way, it's quite nice just to reach out and say hi to them and just uh, ask whether you can have permission to use their photographs. Usually they're quite sort of generous with that sort of thing. But um, so let's have a look at his video. So I say I'm searching for reference. So I pause the video. OK, and then just scroll through. So he's got a great shot there. Now, this is what I mean about, you know, if I go for a walk at Pin Mill, it's not going to look like that unless you're there at presumably five o'clock in the morning or something like that. So this is the great thing about reference material that you might not be able to get otherwise. So um, I could grab that as a screenshot. So I press uh, Windows key and print screen. Uh, let's see what else he's got. He's got some as the sun comes up. OK, and he's got some examples there. So all of these might make for, you know, nice paintings. Now, even if you don't paint them literally, I could go down to Pin Mill and it would give me some ideas maybe about composition. Um, what else have we got here? So this one, I think, down at Flatford, Constable Country. So again, just keeping it on pause, flicking through. There's a great skyscape there. Uh, so I would grab that, press the buttons. Again, you could do, find your uh, way to do your screen grab. So look all of these, you know, look at that. Potential paintings here, potential sort of subjects for study. So this is, um, that looks like Constable's work. Okay, so I can go through there. There you are, Willie Lott's Cottage. And uh, so you don't even need to go down there. So although I do like, I mean, I. I say I do like to go and paint on location. This is just a great tool for grabbing a load of um, photo reference easily. So I've made a series of screen grabs there uh, and they will all go into my screen grab folder. So in, in a little bit, I'll show you what I would do there. OK, so that's YouTube. So I'm going to go over to Pinterest now. So I've got my own page here. So what I do is um, I've got drawing. Let's see drawing okay so here's one these are a few I found this morning so this was looking up artist sketchbooks okay so what you're trying to do is you're scrolling through and you're trying to find the art that you really resonate with and the stuff that jumps out at you now I like this really sort of loose sort of sketchy style there so I've grabbed that and I put that in my folder drawing okay now if we scroll down there's going to be some suggestions based on that 
Um, and let's see if anything jumps out. So they might be the same artist. So yeah, this is nice. Here we are. Okay, so great little studies there. Again, you know, this is like probably working from life. Um, but even so, you're going to learn a lot from looking at the mark making, the gestural qualities, you know. So if you like something, you're trying to understand it and learn from it, not just copy it. So I would then save this into my drawing folder. Okay, so I've got that. And then this is the great thing. We can scroll down and see the suggestions. Now, I like this. Let's have a look at that. Again, really nice sketchbook page there. Good sort of strong drawing. Nice there with a bit of color variation with that yellow circle. So again, that, save that into my drawing folder, okay? And then it offers up more suggestions, more suggestions. So look at that, that's quite a nice one, the rabbit. Okay, so you can see, I mean this, look at this, this is great. So now let's say I like that picture of the rabbit, but I want to do something not from someone else's drawing. Um, so if we, let's say that's a hair. So if we go up here, hair. So let's have a look down here. Okay, so that's quite a nice one, the big ears. Okay, so then I might create a separate folder um, where I would just create um, either animal reference or maybe even more specifically hairs if I was gonna do a specific um, subject on hairs. And then again, scrolling down, we can see sort of various different so that's a nice one there. Now, it might even be that the, the one we looked at might have been inspired from reference from Pinterest. You never know. So um, as I say, if you're going to do a very literal copy, though, where you're going to try to copy it almost to um, to the letter, then I say it's nice just to reach out to the artists and say, you know, I really like your photograph. Do you mind if I use it? I think it's mainly a, it's a mainly an issue if you're going to start to use it commercially. Um, in my classes, I know that people have reached out to photographers and generally they've been really pleased that people like their work. Again, that's a really nice one. That could be a good picture. So again, I would save that in, not in drawing. I would sort of find some other reference. So I've got lots of different references here and I could create a board. So we'll call this animals. Okay, so I could then think, what other animals might I like? I quite like those ones of the crows, crow. So there we go, that's quite a nice one. Could be quite good for my morning sketches. Um, so let's have a look at that. So again, we can scroll down here and there it is, animals. So I'll save it to my animals folder, okay? And then if we go down here, polar bears, good. Crow in flight, very, very nice. So yeah, there's loads of good reference on Pinterest. So I would suggest that um, strongly now um for artists i like to go on to instagram follow artists find artists you like so let's have a look on instagram okay so again you have to be a bit careful with instagram and just try to follow artists whose work that you like and then when you scroll down you're going to see some good sort of stuff um now let's have a so look at that that's that's great isn't it nice dramatic sky there so Instagram has this little icon down at the bottom here. So I can use that and that creates a, uh, you can save your favorite pictures that way. Or again, I could use a screen grab uh, like we use with YouTube and I could save it that way. So again, look at that. Really nice, strong tonal contrast. Um, Another great one there. Who's this? So this is Plain Air Mag. So this is like when you find um, people that aren't just, they're not showing their own work, but they're sort of curating work. So you can see like um, good stuff. So yeah, I like that as well. That's great. OK, 
Okay, so we'll put that in my saved folder there. Anyway, so you get the idea. So now what I want to show you is what I would do with some of these screen grabs just to make sure I've got them in a sort of logical uh, sort of sequence so I can access them when I do my practice drawings. OK, so here I am. So as I say, if you're using Windows, uh, when you do any of these screen grabs, they go into your pictures folder and then there's a separate folder called screenshots. So you can access them there. And you can see here that some of the screenshots I use for the portrait artist of the week, Mary Beard and Annie Mack. Um, I've also got some um, some ones of Ipswich. So that's a little sort of, um, it's a, a theme that's emerging for me is I'd like to do some pictures of historical Ipswich. Okay, and then if we go down here, we can see the images that I grabbed uh, when I was watching YouTube with you just a moment ago. OK, so we've got those there, those there. So they've just gone into this um, folder here. So what I like to do then is you need to sort of set them into some sort of logical sequence. So there's probably lots of different suggestions. I try and keep it relatively simple. And what I do is I have a folder for photography and a folder for art. And so I will basically anything that's actually been created by someone in terms of like with oil paints or drawing or that sort of thing, I will stick almost all of that in the single folder. But I will also try to give it a name so it's easier to find. So I will put stuff in there and then also photography. Photography, I tried to break that down a little bit more into subject. So I might have landscape, buildings, skies, that sort of thing. But again, you don't want to have too many um, folders, OK? So I would just build up like that. So then you've got a reference library on your computer. You've also got like Pinterest boards and at least you've got something that you can dip into. So the idea is that you can sit down every day and practice and as well as drawing sometimes from life, You've got a nice um, library of images that you can draw on. And you'll also find this process of sitting down for 20 minutes every now and again and trying to gather some reference material. It's a great time where ideas and inspiration can strike you. As you can see with Pinterest, it gives you suggestions. And out of those suggestions, you can start to find things that you might not have otherwise have thought of, sort of avenues to explore. So I hope you find some of that useful. Um, as I say, try to get the hang of your screen grab depending on whatever um, sort of application you're using. Start to build up that reference library. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to talk about how to start your daily practice of drawing. And uh, hopefully some of this reference material will come in useful. Anyway, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, always much appreciated. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye.